Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to make a video about IGN and its VPN reviews. Now here on the channel you know I've done over 60 reviews on VPNs, done extended analysis of each one, so much so that I've even made a comparison chart showing each score of every VPN rated in six different kind of categories, pricing, applications, speeds, customer service, support, reputation, streaming, stuff like that. So you know I've been around the block to say a thing or two. So you know that I can objectively look at other reviews and tell you what they're doing wrong, which is what I'm gonna be doing here today. Now IGN itself is more of a gaming magazine, but obviously they're trying to branch into other subjects like VPN because it has pretty profitable affiliate programs, which is ironic since you'll notice that most of their top rated VPNs on the website do have the best affiliate programs. So that's pretty much why they're rating them the highest. Oh, but guys, what is wrong with IGN's um, VPN reviews besides the fact that IGN itself under the parent company J2 Global, which also owns IP Vanish, I think in some ways they shouldn't even be doing VPN reviews if they actually own one of them themselves. That's just my opinion though. Hey guys, if you haven't checked out my website, I really encourage you to do so. It's called VPNTierList.com and essentially what it is is a collection and kind of organization of all the content on my channel. You could view the tier list, which ranks all the VPNs pretty much in existence. You could click on the VPNs themselves to visit the VPN, click on the numbers to visit the review. Um, you can even click on this to see a collection of all the individual ratings for every category of every VPN in a handy dandy comparison table, kind of like a spreadsheet. We also have this, which will list out the best streaming VPNs. This, which lists out some of my favorite products and online services. If you go back to the home page, you could click here to go to the VPN Noob to VPN Master Course, which pretty much teaches you everything you need to know from the basics on VPN. I also have a fact page here to list out some of the common questions um, asked on the channel, as well as some other tier lists I've done as well. Anyways, guys, back to the video. So guys, one of the first things that I want to talk about is that most of the um, reviews that IGN does of VPNs are mostly just talking about... Um, speeds uh, they talk a little bit here about you know what it looks like some very basic settings but they don't really go into the detailed settings of what they provides see it just says like here at the bottom there's a more settings link that springboards a preferences menu that provides deeper personalization so it just goes over it very quickly um and then it just kind of talks about speed for the rest of the review that's pretty much it uh, that's it that's pretty much the review and you know of course Torguard, the top rated vpn here on the channel somehow gets a five out of 10, which is horrible on IGN's website. So we wanna take a look at, you know, like how that can happen, what the reviews here look like on the website. So I already said the one thing they're testing first and kind of foremost of the review is speed, maybe because they're thinking that people are gonna be using these VPNs or are gamers and they care about speed the most, which kind of does make sense. But I do think focusing so much on speed and not talking about anything else, doesn't really provide that good of a review for the end user. Additionally, speed tests on this website seem to be tested from different locations, perhaps different time of days, and this, the test results don't seem very accurate to me. Take for example, this afternoon latency test with gaming. Um, as you can see here, there's different speeds for different providers. If you look at something like TorGuard, it is not getting as good of speeds as something like NordVPN. But if you look very closely, NordVPN, the server location itself, is just listed as United States. So it's not really clear where this person is um, testing this server. Chances are the server they're testing from NordVPN is actually closer to the real world location, which got them better speeds. Whereas with TorGuard, it's using Chicago. If I were to guess where this person was testing, I would say it was somewhere in Seattle, because there seems like they're getting better speeds in Seattle than compared to the other kind of locations. You can even see in Bend, they're getting better locations than stuff like here, which is just generically United States. So this is a problem with their speed tests. They're not testing the same service for every VPN, which is kind of disappointing because it's presenting results that aren't very accurate. Not only that, but speed of me, um, it's not that accurate of a website in my opinion. A lot of times they do speed tests on that website and they're not very accurate. They're overly slow or overly fast. They're just kind of all over the place, unfortunately. So it's not a very good website to test the speeds either. And the kind of confusing thing is, is that they're presenting this table as if it's from speed of me, but it's really just their personalized gaming tests with the VPN. This is where the speed of me tests are. And as you can see here, they're overly slow. So this person probably doesn't have the fastest internet connection. 
but I have never ever gotten only 20 megabytes a second or megabits a second or 18 megabits a second here with Tor Guard and some of these others. It just seems kind of out of whack, out of skew. So for the entire basis of the review being the speed test and then themselves not seem very accurate, kind of loses the legitimacy already. However, we could take a look at some of the details here in the reviews to see kind of what they're missing. Take for example, this purchasing guide for Tor Guard VPN. It talks about how it's $10 a month, $20 for three months, $30 for six months, or $60 a year. It's also funny because they say, um, subscribers who want a year of Tor Guard will pay $60 annually, which also breaks out to $4.99. So no discount from a half of the year of service, but you are locked in for an additional six months. Um, so I, I mean, I guess that makes sense because you're paying $30 um, for six months. So it's like $5 um, a month for six months. And then if you want to pay a year, it's the same kind of pricing scheme, $5. So, but honestly, so it's $60 compared to $30. It's, I don't really have a problem with that because if you want to pay $30 for half a year, it's like, okay, well you could pay that or you could pay it for the yearly price. Um, if you want to just like the product more and subscribe longer. So it, it's critical of that for some unknown reason, really. But then if we take a look about something like ExpressVPN, let's go ahead and look at the ExpressVPN. Look how much shorter the purchasing guide is here than, um, you know, TorGuard. It's shorter um, because there's not as many options. Somehow IGN has figured that having more options is a bad thing. I'm not really sure why. ExpressVPN doesn't even offer... Um, the same kind of plans that Torquard offers. It doesn't offer a three-month plan, so that's annoying. So somehow for IGN, costing $13 a month or $60 for six months for $10 a month, the best monthly rate comes to 12-month subscription. There's no criticism here at all. And if you look at it here right here, they're like, oh, well, you still have to pay $30 for six months. ExpressVPN is twice the amount, and they're not even criticizing at all. Now they do say here a little bit, wait, do they even say that? Look at, let's look up the word expensive. I just looked up the word expensive and it's nowhere anywhere in this review. So they don't criticize ExpressVPN at all with being expensive. They say here, it costs a bit more than NordVPN, its closest competitor. Um, well, I, I guess, is that, a, is that a criticism? Maybe. Another thing I kind of want to talk about with these VPN reviews is that they're very inconsistent in how they recommend things. Take for example, if you look at kind of like this speed list, you would assume that something like maybe NordVPN or maybe ExpressVPN or um, would be recommended as maybe the best VPNs for gaming because they're getting the best results according to their tests. But if you look at the best VPN for gaming list, it doesn't even have those options. It has private internet access, IP Vanish, and some other random ones, which is kind of weird. Um, you know, IP Vanish again, it's owned by J2 Global and they're associated with um, IGN. And what do you know? There's not even a disclaimer in this article. To be fair, they do have disclaimers elsewhere on the website, but they don't put it here, which is not okay in my opinion, again. Another thing I want to point out is that in some of their best VPN articles, like the best VPN services for 2020, um, the information is out of date. Take for example here, it said ExpressVPN does limit you to three simultaneous connections, which is not true. ExpressVPN actually gives you five simultaneous connections, so they just kind of have parts of their lists and reviews that don't have the right information, which is definitely disappointing. Not only that, but if we take a look at this list of the best VPNs, Let's see what the commission rates are. ExpressVPN has 100% commission rates for one month. It's the most expensive VPN. It's the most popular VPN for affiliates because it makes them a lot of money. Now, is it the worst VPN in the world? Well, definitely not. But again, CyberGhost VPN, definitely not as popular, but still very popular among affiliates because it also has 100% commission rates and a very good affiliate program. NordVPN, another VPN that has 100% commission rates and is very popular for the same reasons. Tunnel Bear also has very high affiliate rates, 50%. Winscribe also has 50% commission rates as well. 
These three VPNs all push you toward long com commitment plans, which is going to make the website more money. They all have 100% commission plans on the one month and they're all pretty expensive. So it's also going to make them a lot of money as well. <laughs> which is ironic because in the tour guard review, they couldn't stop complaining about the price. And all three of these VPNs right here are subsequently the most expensive VPNs you can buy. I don't see any mention of any cheaper VPNs in the best VPN list. And it's funny because, you know, you think people who want to buy video games wouldn't want to spend all their money on another product like VPN. So guys, in conclusion, what do I think of IGN's VPN reviews? Well, I don't think they're really good. Number one, they really only test for speeds in the reviews and any other kind of stuff they talk about is just to criticize the VPN with kind of weird reasons to promote other VPNs instead. Number two is that the website has inconsistent recommendations across the board. You'll find speed tests showing some VPNs are better and then you'll find a best VPN for gaming list and you'll end up finding an entirely different set of VPNs recommended for whatever reason, whoever wrote the article or whatever the website wants to promote at the given time. Number three, speed tests on the website don't seem very accurate because they're using websites I don't find that accurate. Not only that, but they seem to be testing from different regions. They could be testing at different times, different people. It's not clear kind of the metrics of the test and what is happening. And since they spend so much time on it, you think they would do a little bit better of a job. But I don't find the speed results on the website to be very accurate from what I've been doing for around four to five years testing out VPN. Number four, the website has out of date information in several reviews. Um, not having the right details and being sometimes overly nitpicky for the wrong reasons and promoting other VPNs, I think for the wrong reasons as well. You know, why would you criticize a VPN for only being $30 a month and then promote a VPN that is twice the price for six months and not criticize it? It doesn't really make that much sense in my opinion. Another thing that I've noticed that I want to talk about is that the website itself will recommend the best VPN services like CyberGhost is its number two recommended service for VPN users but it itself on the website doesn't even have a review for CyberGhost explaining why they recommend it so much. It's just kind of like, well, not, this is a good VPN to recommend and we'll put it in the list. I would wager that this list was probably created um, before they even thought about doing the reviews, but this list was apparently made in April 8th, 2020, which is not that long ago, and they've been doing VPN reviews for some time at least. So I'm not really sure why they're recommending a VPN they haven't even reviewed. Another kind of reason why I don't really trust their best VPN lists. Overall, guys, I don't think IGN has done that good of a job recommending VPNs to people. That's just my opinion, though. They are free to do their own reviews and do VPN reviews even though they own one. That's entirely up to them. I just don't think you should rely on them for VPN reviews because you could stay here on the channel and look at reviews that actually take a look at VPN pricing objectively, recommend you cheap VPNs that are fast, good for streaming, reliable when the applications, good customer support, etc, etc. Thanks for stopping by guys for this ranty critical video and I'll see you on the next one very soon.